Hi everyone! Today you're going to learn about expanding radical expressions. Radical expressions are the same as square roots. So first of all, you're going to learn the basic rules of square roots and afterwards expanding radical expressions. So what were the rules of square roots? It is a bit of prior knowledge. So first we're going to have a look at operations with radicals. So multiplying square roots. How did that work again? We have the square root of 4 times the square root of 9. We know that the square root of 4 is 2 and that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So what we get is 2 times 3 equals 6. However, we could also have done this in a different way. But how? If we have the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 9, it's the same as the square root of 4 times 9 which is the square root of 36. And we know that the square root of 36 is the same as 6, since 6 times 6 is equal to 36. What we now know is that we have a rule. And the rule is that when we have a square root, for instance, called a, times the square root b, that's the same as the square root of a, b. And this was 6, of course. Then, taking the square of a square root. How did that work again? So, for instance, the square root of 13 squared. We know that everything squared is multiplying by itself. Since uh, 4 squared was the same as 4 multiplied by 4. And 5 squared was the same as 5 multiplied by 5 and this must of course be 2 so it's the same as the square root of 13 times the square root of 13 which is the same as the square root of 169 since we were allowed to calculate 13 times 13 have a look at our first row what we know of the square root of 169 is that it's equal to 13. Since 13 times 13 is equal to 169. So, what our rule is, when we have the square root of 13 squared, I can immediately tell you it's equal to 13. So, a common rule, when we have the square root of, for instance, a or any other numbers squared, now we know that our answer is just the same. They cancel each other out. That's what happens. But what about taking the square root of a squared number? Does that work the same? Yes, it does. Because if we have the square root of 13 squared, that means that we have the square root of 13 times 13, which is again 169, which is 13. So I can immediately tell you that the square root of 13 squared is the same as 13. And now you might think, well, this might be a coincidence. But it isn't. You can try it with many other numbers and you will still get your same answer as you started with. So a basic row is that the square root of a squared is equal to a, since those two cancel each other out as well. But how about multiplying square roots when uh, we have different numbers? So the square root of 2 times 32, that's the same as the square root of 64, because that's the rule that we just learned. We can do 32 times 2. And that was 8. But what if we have 2 times the square root of 3 times 4 times the square root of 21? This is already more complicated. When we had, for instance, 2x, we knew that there was an invisible multiplication sign between the 2 and the x. The same works with square roots and numbers. So the number and the square root are stick to, with each other. So that means that there is an invisible multiplication sign over there. That means that we can just multiply the 2 and the 4 together, and the 3 and the 21. 
what we get is 8 times the square root of 3 times 21. Which was 8 times the square root of 63. But, now we're not there yet, since we can split 63. We can split 63 in 9 and 7. And why do we choose 9? As you might have already seen, is that the square root of 1 is equal to 1. The square root of 4 is equal to 2. The square root of 9 is equal to 3. The square root of 16 is equal to 4. The square root of 25 is equal to 5. The square root of 36 is equal to 6. And so on. You really must know the sequence by heart. As you, say, as you can see, I chose a number from this sequence. So that it has a nice answer. So we had a look at all the numbers underneath our square root. So the 1, the 4, the 9, the 16, the 25, the 36, as high as possible. And we could see that we could make a multiplication with 9. So we chose this. We chose 9 times 7 because that's the same as 63. We can split it up because it also works the other way around. So we get 8 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. We know that the square root of 9 is the same as 3. So we get 8 times 3 times the square root of 7 is 24 times the square root of 7. So, you must make sure that you always simplify your answer as far as possible. What about adding square roots? We have 3 times the square root of 7 plus 2 times the square root of 7. It's the same as when I have 3 apples plus 2 apples, which is 5 apples. But now I have 3 times the square root of 7 plus 2 times the square root of 7, which is 5 times the square root of 7. How about 4 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 5. Remember there is an invisible 1 in front. So in total we have 5 times the square root of 3 and, five, uh, and 1 times the square root of 5. We cannot add them together since they are not alike. So the same with letters. We could not say that A plus B was just A plus B. The same works with square roots. The square root must be alike, otherwise you cannot add them. How about subtracting square roots? That actually works the same. So 5 square root 7 minus 3 square root 7 is just 2 square root 7. Because they are alike, so I can subtract the 5 and the 3. When we have 7 square root of 6 minus 3 minus 2 square root of 3 minus square root of 2. We know that 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. So we have 7 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3, which is 5 square root of, th of 3 minus square root of th 2. We cannot simplify this any further since they are not alike. Alright, so now you know. Again, you refresh your mind with the basic examples of square roots. Now you're going to have a look at expanding radical expressions. So, expand and simplify. 4 square root of 2 plus 3 times square root of 2 plus 5. It just works the same again. So, 4 square root of 2 times square root of 2, 4 square root of 2 times 5, 3 times square root of 2, and 3 times 5. You get 4 times the square root of 4 plus 20 square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 2 plus 15. Highlight the like terms, just like we did with the letters. So 20 square root of 2 is a light term with 3 square root of 2, since the square root of 2 are alike. In total, we have 23 times the square root of 2. And as you saw, see, we changed the square root of 4 into 2, since this is the answer. So we get 4 times 2 plus 23 square root of 2 plus 15, which is 8 plus 23 square root of 2 plus 15. 
You can add 8 and 15 since those are like terms. So we get 23 square root of 2 plus 23. Next example. So please try this one yourself first. So now pause the video and then check if you did it correct or not. Alright, so first, 8 times by, uh, square root of 5 times 2, which is 16 square root of 5. 8 square root of 5 times square root of 8 is 8 square root of 40. And in this case, minus 8 square root of 40, since there is a minus symbol over there. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times minus square root of 8 is minus square root of 8. Now you're going to have a look if there are light terms. But, unfortunately, there are no light terms over here. But, we can split a square root. Think about a little sequence that, you, that, we, that we just wrote down. About the square root of 4, the square root of 9, the square root of 16, the square root of 25. And so on. We can make a calculation that has a nice answer. And that's 4 times 10. So we chose this 1. And for the 8 as well. What you get, since we know that 4, the square root of 4, is equal to 2, we get 2 times 8, which is 16. And over here, 2 times our 1 was just 2. So this is our answer. However, first check if there are no light terms. There are no, none. But please write it down in standard form. So the one with the highest square root uh, at the front, then with no square root at the back. I really hope you had the same answer as over here. And if not, please ask your question.